Hello and welcome to Office Hours, the live component of the facility where good old Professor Kyle opens up his blast doors or digital aperture, what have you, and lets all of you, members of the general public, and my facility staff members, security team, researchers, assistants, professors, all of them, come in for about the next hour or so and ask good old Professor Kyle any old science, pop culture, hair carry kind of question that you may have. Of course, if you want to continue on this conversation after this video is live, you can go to patreon.com slash Kyle Hill. Sign up for the facility today. Get your silky white lab coat, as you've seen me wear. Nary two days ago. Talk with me on Discord. See things early. So much. Of course, if you want me to see things today, you really, really, really want your question. Seen or heard or read, you can always try Super Chat right there on YouTube. Can't promise that I'll get to everything, but I can promise that everything that I do get to, well, whatever, you'll always be simping for science, and that's what we appreciate here at the facility. It's all going towards education, entertainment. As always, thank you for my security team in the chat who's keeping y'all not so rowdy, like Roddy Piper. But as an example, we have Elizabeth Calvert with the 50 who says, hey, Science Kyle, my tiny human has a question. Your brain is different like mine. How did you make it through school when it got hard? I don't like my classmates, and that makes it hard. Alex is in, Alex has a has ADHD, and Alex is in second grade. Now, Alex, your mom is a member of the facility, uh, a, 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 a lovely professor at the facility, so your mom actually asked me, to say something to you. So, Alex, I hope you're listening. Um, hey, Alex. Science guy here. Congratulations on getting through your first couple days of second grade. I know that school can be difficult, especially when you feel different and you feel like it's hard making friends. That makes the whole school process a lot tougher. Um, and I understand how you feel. School is really hard for me, too. I didn't have a lot of friends. I didn't talk to a lot of people. So instead of trying to make that work like everyone wants you to, I tried to make school what I wanted it to be. I wanted to study hard. I wanted to learn amazing things. And I wanted to finish school being smart. I wanted to learn a bunch bunch of things and be a smart science guy. So that's what I did. When I went to school, I tried not to focus so much on trying to be friendly with everybody because not everybody is going to be friendly, Alex. So I focused on paying attention, taking good notes, doing good on my homework, making my parents proud with the grades that I got. And at the other side of school, um... I came out and I started doing exactly what I wanted to be doing, and I was very lucky to be able to do that. So, Alex, I know school can be hard, but I believe in you, and I know you can do it. And if you're already asking these questions and you're already in second grade, you'll be fine. It's going to be, uh, I'm not going to lie, it's not going to be easy, but remember that there's a whole lot of life to live. Grade school, high school, there's a, most of your life is after that. So don't so don't get too don't don't think about it too hard. Um we have exploring with Sparky who's just simping with a $500 donation. Everyone calm down. Everyone calm down. We got to talk about Willie Mammoth. It's the main thing we're going to be talking about today. Um, Chicholo with a $31, as usual, from Australia. Sparky, the $500 donation. Um, before we move on to the Mammoth, I want to... Oh, oh, Sparky, you got competition. The Sparky, okay, so everyone knows about Sparky by this point. Sparky 
he he wakes up on a pri. I, actually, Sparky, I found your your private Instagram, and I was not disappointed. It's all Lamborghinis and pools and all that and all that crap. So I was ever. So I, I've told the story about Sparky before. He wakes up private island, fully naked, sunglasses, body surfs out to his private yacht. He's he's a crazy man. But now, let's pause. Let's, let's, eh. Y'all are going crazy just because I was gone for a week. I'm still around and alive. Mandatory sin with the New Zealand $500 from New Zealand. It says, hey Kyle, love the show and I love, oh, show the love and I love the show so I'm simping for science. Mandatory sin. The only thing that's mandatory here is learning. And that's what we're going to do right now. Thank you, mandatory sin. This next part is just for Y'all are crazy. I don't need it. I appreciate it. It's all going to... We did some cool things with some of your simps uh, not too recently here at the facility. We got... Maybe I was... Who was I telling... Maybe I was telling it on Twitch, but we did um, purchase some... Uh, there was an auction of the ori of original Mythbusters props. Um, they were selling it in Los Angeles. Some Mythbusters prompts, uh, props and... With the help of facility staff, with the help of simps, just like you. Not not the simps who watch streamers lick artificial ears. But thanks to the science simps like you, we made a sizable, nearly $10,000 donation to the Grant Imahara Steam Foundation. And in return, I have received, which is now behind me somewhere, I'm in a... Uh, we have now received at the facility a, an, an original blueprint that they used at the beginning of one of the Mythbusters episodes. And that Mythbusters episode was a sword-swinging robot. Can a sword cut through another sword? A robot that was created and crafted by one Grant Imahara. And I wanted to bid on and get that piece because not only is it a great piece of Mythbusters memorabilia, but it's also an episode that Grant, uh, who was a friend of mine, um, that Grant worked on. So, thank you to all of you. I know, I, I know some of you are not not familiar with the stream. You're like, geez, five hundred dollars. That's a lot, and it is. It's too much. But I try my best to make sure that we're filtering it towards worthy causes and cool places. And, and you know, I can't just what? What do I just put it in a crappy frame from Michaels? This this four by four foot blueprint signed by Adam Savage, worked on by Grant Imahara. No, 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 no. We will be going to Adam Savage's cage. Cage. Well, it's kind of a cage. We will be going to Adam Savage's cave, and he will be making a custom Mythbusters inspired frame to put our memorabilia in. And I will be bringing you that experience whenever we figure out when our schedules align. But see, we're cool and we're doing cool stuff here. Do you know what else is cool? Maybe woolly mammoths. I've been working on my transitions. Ryan Nowicki, the five, says, Hey Kyle, I love your content. If you could change one thing in Star Wars for plot or comedy, what would it be? Mine is Anakin loses limbs to the younglings. Um, I would like... Uh, relativity to factor into Star Wars such that when they're traveling near light speed to different places, they age differently so that uh, the Skywalker twins would be radically different ages, but they're twins. And I think that'd be funny. Anyway. Okay. Yes. The Savage Cage. We will be going to the Savage Cage. Um, Adam loved the idea. I love Adam. It all worked out. Um, but if you follow Adam, you know he's very busy right now, so. Woolly Mammoths. Everyone knows Woolly Mammoths. I think that's because they're they're featured in a lot of children's and, and young adult media and, like, history books. And civic, not, not civics books, but like biology textbooks and stuff. For whatever reason, these animals that died out a long, 10,000 years ago 
are in everyone's mind somehow. Kind of like saber-toothed tigers because they're cool, hairy elephants. Awesome. They're all gone. They went extinct. And for many, many years, Cody Nasbitt says, please, please, please give me a pet woolly mammoth. You can do that at the facility, right? Well, Cody, just a second. Do you want a woolly mammoth? We'll get into that. So for many, many years, this poster child of this extinct era has been the subject of what's called de-extinction efforts, which is exactly what it sounds like, trying to bring something back out of extinction. Mark Eric Lane says, Hey Kyle, quite literally working on a presentation on the Paleo and Neolithic era for my students tomorrow, so following this video seems appropriate. Mark, we are gonna nail we're gonna knock it out of the park. Just for you. Greetings from Cyprus. Hello, Andreas Achi. Achelios. Ooh, fancy name. Anyway, I'm not going to look at chat for a second, all right? Let's focus on these hairy boys. De-extinction efforts. Why? Well, most animals, I'd say, probably, that have went extinct, we have no tissue of. If an animal died 10,000 years ago, what are the chances that we'd have extant or existing, that's the other word for, except for extinct, extant. Use that in your sentences and spice it up with science. But it just so happens to be the case that where all the woolly mammoths died, like Siberia, they could their corpses could be frozen and stay frozen for many, many thousands of years because in some of these environments, the ice would never thaw. I mean, it is now because of climate change, and that's we'll get to that. But if these animals' tissues and their bodies were deep enough in the ice, in a place like Siberia, it might never thaw down to that, down to permafrost areas. That's why it's called permafrost, permanent frost. And so their bodies could stay frozen for thousands of years, which is why, more recently, fast-forwarding, scientists uncovered intact bodies of woolly mammoths with intact tissue. Fast forward again, we've taken that tissue and we have sequenced the entire woolly mammoth genome. Now fast forward to, to, get to today again, with this de-extinction effort, what could we do with this mammoth DNA? Well, the idea is to kind of Jurassic Park this thing. That is to say, if you could recreate the entire mammoth genome, you could take an elephant's egg cell, just like a, a human's egg cell, you could remove the nucleus. The nucleus is a little glob inside the cell that contains all the DNA. You remove the, uh, the, uh, the DNA material from that nucleus in the egg cell, and you inject it with a very small... I'm making a lot of sound effects. You inject a very small needle into the cell and you insert the woolly mammoth DNA. Oh, and I should show you. We do actually, so when I say that, that's an actual woolly mammoth leg. It's incredible. I bet that smells so bad. So... Once mammoth DNA is in the nucleus of an egg cell, you would insert that egg cell into the womb of an extant animal. An animal that's very similar to a woolly mammoth. Like an elephant. So Asian elephants, for example, share a common ancestor with woolly mammoths about 6 million years ago. Which means... Asian elephants are a good candidate to still have enough of the biological machinery to birth an elephant-like thing. So if everything went correctly, you work on a mammoth foot like that, you extract DNA, you use computers and technology and what you know about science to fill in all the gaps in the DNA, and then you get the entire DNA readout of the woolly mammoth. You take that... You synthesize the DNA of a woolly mammoth. You 
put it in a very tiny needle. You take an elephant egg cell, you remove the elephant DNA, you replace it with woolly mammoth DNA, you replace the egg cell back in the elephant, and two years later, I think, is the gestation period. It's very long. Ozzy Ozdead says, can we address the elephant in the room? Okay, I'll, that's fine. That's fine. And then two years later, baby woolly mammoth. Now, I'm bringing this up that that's the perfect scenario. And it's not without some sort of precedent either. We have, in fact, brought an extinct animal. We've, we've used science, the hand of science, and we've reached into the past and we've grabbed an extinct animal and we've brought it back screaming to life. We've done that before. Uh, it's with a kind of mountain goat, goat called an ibex. And there was a species of ibex that went extinct. Um, we were able to generate many viable embryos, a couple dozen, and I think one of them actually was born. And it was an extinct animal being born again t from an animal that was similar, like another mountain goat. Now, this little lamb or goat what's a baby goat called don't care well now i do care anyway this little mountain goat only survived for 15 minutes its lungs were malformed but for those 15 minutes oh it's a kid a goat's kid right oh that sounds worse now this kid lived for 15 minutes but those 15 minutes we did in fact de-extinct this ibex not without precedent why i'm bringing this up now is that uh a team from harvard and one of the scientists who actually helped come up with the most popular genetic ed editing technology have just received 15 million dollars at a company called colossal to bring a woolly mammoth back to life and they say they might be able to do this within two years. But the way that they, this uh, at Colossal, the way that they are going about this is quite different. Instead of, well, let me put it this way. Dr. George Church, who's a biologist at Harvard Medical School, he's one of the guys who came up with this famous genetic edit, edit, uh, editing technology, CRISPR, CRUST. <laughs> ah, ah! clustered regularly interspaced short palindromic repeats and he surveyed the science and he immediately threw out the idea of trying to use asian elephants to birth a woolly mammoth he didn't think that subjecting those animals to that would be ethical and it would be potentially dangerous and if he wants to make a bunch of woolly mammoths he would need a bunch of elephants and it's just not going to work out so he's not going to do, he's not going to birth a woolly mammoth from an extant elephant. He's also not planning on getting a full woolly mammoth genome and building an embryo from that. So what is he doing? Instead, what this company, Colossal, wants to say, say that they can maybe do, produce a viable embryo in like two years is identify the genes that make an el that would make an elephant more woolly mammothy and then put this embryo in an artificial womb and take it to term now those 60 genes that you would want to turn on in an elephant embryo would produce um, I was trying to think of the right science word. I'll just go with the casual word. Would produce the right effects in the body type. Phylogeny? Phylogenetic effects? Anyway. So these genes would turn on hair. Bunch of hair on the body. Smaller ears, as you can see. Much smaller ears. What do elephants use uh, their big, big ears for? Well, one of the adaptations is to radiate heat with all the blood vessels 
in their ears. It's, it's good to radiate heat away from the body. You don't really want to do that in Siberia. Much smaller ears, much higher forehead, a lot more fat on their big stompy bones to help survive these very cold, cold climates. So what George Church wants to do is take elephant embryos, turn on, no, no, I, I'm, I'm misspeaking. He doesn't want to turn on these, um, these genes like, like, like switches, like epigenetics. No, he wants to take CRISPR and insert woolly mammoth-like genes into these embryos and then take them to term. So you're born with some sort of mammoth-elephant hybrid, which they're calling a mammophant. Sounds dirty to me. Two things. So they're not really de-extincting a woolly mammoth. They're not taking a full woolly mammoth embryo to term. Rather, they're making ele they want to make elephants, elephant embryos more woolly mammothy by using uh, transgenics by inserting genes with CRISPR, which can go into cells, clip out by molecular recognition, clip out certain strands of DNA, and then insert other pieces of DNA, which then get expressed, which then become woolly mammothy. They want to do that. And the reason that they want to do that um, is, one, well, one of the big reasons is as Dr. Church says it will help the environment that woolly mammoths being inserted back into these thawing places like Siberia can help um, revitalize the environment and fight climate change, which isn't crazy. I mean, to an area does help the ecosystem. We have good evidence for that. Um, reinserting uh, gray wolves into Yosemite or Yellowstone, I forget which, um, we have evidence of that working kind of uh, restabilizing the the ecosystem. And he wants like a herd of them, a bunch of woolly mammoths. But now, now that you know, and they have $15 million to do this, which I don't think is enough, but it's Yellowstone. Yellowstone, wolves in Yellowstone. Yes, I think there's a whole documentary about it. Um, But now, like the title of this video, I ask you, this question. Should we? I think this is ethically a little bit more clear than making true woolly mammoths, because there's a whole... I saw many of you in chat. Is that audio thing... Audio's cutting out? Audio's cutting out? Why? Really? I'm not doing nothing. Audio's good, audio's good, audio's good, audio's good, audio's good. Okay, 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 calm down. I think maybe I was eating a little bit too much CPU. Okay, jeez, oh, oh, so many comments. Good, okay, just two seconds. I, I closed all my research tabs, so now it should be fine. Bandwidth issues. Audio is better than your hair now. Ozzy, you are a fool and you're banned. My hair looks great right now. It's a little wavy. It's a little parted. Never parted. Just got out of the shower. Shut. Do you know how I woke up today, Ozzy? I woke up, jumped out of the facility bed, which is like a capsule hotel. I'm, I'm like I'm in a coffin. Jumped up, shorts, tank top, biked 10 miles came back, jumped in the facility pool, 10 laps in the pool, jumped up, coffee, jumped it right in front of you. So, Ozzy, shower. Ozzy, you're banned. Get out. Get out. Get out. Get out. Anyway, I think it's ethically more clear if you're making full, or if you're trying to de-extinct an, act, de an actual woolly mammoth. Because as many of you in the chat were saying before I looked, and everyone's like, oh, everything's wrong. Um, 
many in the chat were saying, like, should you? If an animal went extinct, should it have gone extinct? If it went extinct because of human activity, are, do we owe it something? They went extinct 10,000 years ago. Modern humans had nothing to do with that. So, although they were probably hunted to extinction by ancient humans, whatever. But, do we owe them something? Does anyone owe anyone anything? That's complicated. This is a different thing entirely to me. They're, they're, they want to reintroduce woolly mammoth-like animals by taking existing body plans and adding hair and fat and small ears to them. That kind of seems bizarre to me. And many scientists quoted in the many pieces about this in the news were highly skeptical uh, about it. Zach Ramsey says, hot damn, YouTube chat just paid uh, rent for Kyle. Mm. <laughs> no. It's so expensive here in the facility. <laughs> that barely pays for power. Um, and who's... I don't spend it on... It's going towards... Si you must be new here. It's fine. They want to reintroduce elephant-like things to an environment to help the environment and um, how does this make money for their uh, investors at the colossal company well maybe new genetic engineering technology will come out of this or uh, bioengineering or what have you different technologies as uh, is often the case with when you do science technologies can spin off out of that be very successful yada 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 but many of the scientists oh i'm back on track now many of the scientists quoted in these pieces we're very skeptical of this. You bring a half-elephant, half-woolly mammoth back into the world. These are very social animals. How would... Who would take care of it? What kind of... Would it even be raised correctly? We don't know how the biology of these hybrid animals or their psychology operates. Is it ethical to bring them into a harsh world and, and throw them into an environment? that they've never experienced before, an animal that the environment has never experienced before. Should you do that? Could $15 million be better spent on changing the climate or, or helping to rein in climate change or help animal conservation efforts in another way? I think I'm on the side of the skeptical scientists on this one. I, you know, it'd be one thing if you were trying to de-extinct an actual mammoth, but to put millions and millions of dollars on the guess that mammoth-elephant hybrids would help the Siberian climate on unproven technology, and not just unproven technology, when I say you need like an elephant egg, you know, and insert DNA into the elephant egg, no one has ever harvested an egg from an elephant. When the scientists said they don't want to grow it in an elephant, they want an artificial womb, there are artificial wombs, but no one has ever done that for an elephant. Baby elephants get up to 200 pounds before they're born. So to say all of that comes together and happens, and happens reliably and ethically within two years... It, it doesn't really seem like a winning proposition. Uh, Samira Perry says, I don't see how they would help the climate. Well, the idea is that um, through their movements, they would help um, pack down ice and snow with their feeding, feeding habits. They would uh, change grassland and et cetera composition. They would fell trees um, to help insulate the ground. Uh, Jake... She Sheepus says, dude, make a video about this. I am. Right now. Um, Adam Frost, the New Zealand 17, says, from what you were saying, it is like what humans did with wolves to modern dogs, but a lot faster and with a targeted result? Don't know if it's right or not, but sounds similar. Great convo, by the way. Adam, well, 
I should just note that if you're using all caps in the chat repeatedly, you're going to be banned. Um, what we did with wolves and reintroducing wolves into an environment is different because these wolves already existed. We knew how they operate. We knew where they were. We didn't have to artificially make them and make a hybrid wolf and then reintroduce it. But what you're saying specifically is not quite the same case. We're, from ancient dogs, wolves, to house pets, um, or just pets, I guess you could say, that's an artificial evolution. That's, it's, and it takes thousands of years. It's, it's, um, this is doing, this is, this is condensing thousands of years of artificial evolution down into a single scientific intervention. And I, I actually like that you bring up dogs because uh, science like this has to answer the question, well, what if it goes wrong? What if these animals are in pain? What if these animals, um, is it ethical to treat these animals this way? And when you say dogs, I think immediately about um, bulldogs, for example. Um, 80 to 90% of them are born by C-section. Their heads are too big. Their nasal cavities are too small. They have respiratory problems their entire lives. They're in pain. Their hips are bad. I argue, and I've ha I have said, it is unethical to keep breeding bulldogs. These animals live in pain. We've done that to them. I just read a report the other day um, that like 90% of chickens that we use for meat and eggs, 90% of them have breastbone fractures because we put so much meat on their bones and grow them so large artificially and grow them to be so large. We cause real tangible suffering to these animals. So who's to say that Dr. Church couldn't or wouldn't create an animal, a hybrid, that could suffer in a similar way? Of course, you could say, well, don't worry, we'll, we'll, it won't. We'll prove that it won't. And, see, and, and the, having all those unanswered questions is part of the problem, right? It adds to the case of unethicality. Tyler, the 20, says, right or wrong, I like de-extinction's potential for other extinct species, and especially species in danger of extinction. Maybe this could help us better understand elephant genetics. Helps with the, uh, P.S., I hope this 20 helps with the rent, LOL. <laughs> oh, man. If you knew where I was. Anyway. De-extinction as a concept is interesting, but nothing about the technology has been proven yet. Um, and reports and science says that by 2050, in 25 years, half of species will be gone. How? Do you mean half of, like, bugs? Everything. That's what we've done. Half of life. Gone. That's an insane, that's an insane statistic. And with unproven technology, that's it doesn't seem like that's going to keep pace with that kind of with, with with that kind of value that's just so big and so oppressive to life. Seems like money would be better spent on environmental conservation and animal conservation rather than these pie in the sky um, genetic engineering moonshots. That's my two cents. Jay Twisted with the 50 says, Hey, Kyle, love the show. Just made it to the stream and going to have to leave, but I have to simp for science and give a shout out to the security team. Of course, thank you to security team for keeping it nice and safe in here. Uh, Kalen, Andy with the Australian 1599. I think we've had, so I think Twinge with another three. Thank you, Twinge. Uh... I think I think you've you've heard my thoughts on this, so you might. Well, obviously you have ears. Um, 
But whether or not you think this is ethical comes down to you and your convictions and what you think is sound and safe. And I'm not sure. I think I'm on the other side of this. Cool. But will they keep Siberia cool? No one knows. And I think that's the problem. Ray. With a 20 Oh, hello. Nice and close. Gray with a 20 dollars says, "Hey show, love the Kyle. Oh, you're not Australian. Hey show, love the Kyle. Just want to say how much I appreciate what you do. I'm relatively new in the scientific research field and I'm finding it's easy to burn out. Your show gets me excited for all kinds of learning again." Gray, I'm honored to be a part of your learning journey. I know burnout is easy. Trust me. I've been burnt out for 5 years now. Um so I hope all of your research, whatever it is, goes well. I'm sure it's. I'm sure if you explain it to me, I'll be like, "Damn, that's cool." Nerdy Loki with the Australian. Nerdy Loki with the Australian twenty dollars. Hey Kyle, if and when bio biomechanical augmentation becomes viable or mainstream, what body parts would you swap out, if any? I would change my shoddy eyes in a heartbeat, and maybe an arm or two. I, um, quick, quick flex. I asked the Winter Soldier, Sebastian Stan, on stage what he would do with a robotic arm in real life. I said I would use my super strong robotic thumb to open beer bottles. I think you gotta go, if, 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 I've said this before, if you're talking about, like, transhumanism and stuff, and if you could replace your bar body parts with something that is equal and or better, I think replacing an arm is, is, is easy. Voitan with a five says, the money should be spent on making plankton that can survive ocean acidity levels rising. Maybe. Inazuma Fool, back again with a 10, says, Hey Kyle, hope last week treated you well. Eh, glad I could catch you live this week. Here's my small simp for science per usual. Twinge with the 5 says, Don't be burned out, Fabio Hawking. We live you. First of all. Yes, even though my agents still pitch me to people as Science Fabio, I think we're, I think we're more Thor or Momoa at this point. And two, I'm not... Stephen Hawking and I are not on the same level. <laughs> you know, he can do, like, black hole equations in it, or he could do black hole equations in his head and stuff. I, um... I have to look up, look up like, how many ounces a pound is. Uh, Redisc with the 20 says, Are there any other animals you know of that purposefully poison themselves to relax? Like with alcohol or, or drugs and stuff. Um, yeah, bees can be alcoholics. And bees drink pure ethanol. Or can drink pure ethanol. Which is a hydrocarbon. Um, and uh, CH4, I believe. And, no, that's methane. What's ethanol? Doesn't matter. Um, pure ethanol. And ethanol is what goes into your alcohol. And it's what makes alcohol alcoholic. Grams of ethanol per mass or per volume. Um, so your ethanol is diluted in some sort of liquid. Water that tastes kind of like crappy, crappy pine needles, if you like IPAs. Um, there have been observations of bees that drink pure ethanol, basically become drunks, and then they get thrown out of the beehive. Or the other bees are like, do your work. And they're like, <laughs> and they're like, you're not the boss of me. And then Jerry Seinfeld comes and goes, what's the deal with drunk bees? And he throws them out of the hive. I'm losing my mind. Hemso, the 999. Long time viewer, first time simper. Welcome. Six simper Tyrannus. I'm. <laughs> I should just quit. Just want to show my appreciation for you. I'm currently studying to be a mathematics educator 
to show people that math can be fun. Love the show. Keep being you. Heart emoji. Hemso. Right up there. Ethanol is C2H5OH. I was way off. Um, mathematics educator, huh? I think mathematics educators, that's a hard one. I fully support you. I hope you have all the luck in the world. Um, because mathematics gets a, gets a bad rap. If people think science is boring, as like the, the, the generality of it, like science is boring, I don't, when am I going to use this? Mathematics is like, everyone thinks math is too hard. Um, so if you can do your best to make math seem fun and interesting and not hard, even though it, it, it is, um, I'm sure you'll do great, but it's hard. Mathematics is, is hard to make fun. Um, which is why whenever I show equations, um, I used to do it more on Because Science, but whenever I, I talk through equations, um, I always wanted to go to, through the fundamentals of what all the variables mean and what you're actually doing. Because I think people get caught up in the numbers of stuff, where I think the power of math is to show that if you have a mathematical relationship, you can plug in anything and it will still give you a sensible answer. So once you know the underpinnings, the idea of what a mathematical phrase is saying, that is true power. Because then the numbers can be anything. And that's cool. Kyle Howard with the five. Ooh, and you have long hair too. It's going to be an amazing con comment. Hey, Kyle. Kyle here. Uh, have you heard about the new carnivore fossil in Russia, nine times bigger than the T-Rex? No way. I don't believe it. Oh, and Azuma Fool says... Dolphins can poke puffer fish to get mild hallucinogenic effects. Yeah, I heard about that too. Uh, Brian Murray, question from the Vodlands. As always, with a five, says, what are your favorite genres of video games and what are your favorite games in those genres? I'm not a multiplayer guy. I do, uh, multiplayer games stress the heck out of me. Um, because I'm always afraid about dying. Or, or like, just repeatedly being bad whatever i don't like playing warzone or anything like that what's i'm getting i'm a single player narrative guy i like to play a game for a couple hours a night escape into the narrative be immersed in it um and i don't really so like in terms of narrative first person games or not first yeah yeah narrative like no it doesn't have to be first person but like narrative story driven games i don't really have a genre uh that i prefer I just like a story that's very well written um, and very well acted. That's about it. Or the, or the mechanics are really fun. So, um, like, I love Fallout, but I also like, but I also love the new God of War series. The new Spider-Man series is fantastic. Um, Witcher Three, Half Life, Red Dead Redemption Two. Horizon Zero Dawn, all fantastic, relatively recent, story-driven things. And if you really want, if you really want my, my money, if I had to pick one game in, in that oeuvre, in terms of best, most immersive, uh, the Last of Us series, you just can't beat it. And I, and I won't, I won't hear, I, I, you can't convince me otherwise. It, it has... The best graphics, the best motion capture, the best writing, and the best acting. Certainly. It, it definitely has the best acting of any video game ever. Ever. Full stop. Um, so that would be my money. The Last of Us series. Uh, people say, you right. I agree. Uh, Tobias says, good night. Hey, see ya. Um, but I, I want to ask you one more question. Uh, Milo May says, yeah, but Abby sucks. No, no. The, the point of the story was, see, because the, the, the traditional hero narrative is weaved with the, the villain and what you think is the villain isn't actually because she has a storyline that interweaves with Ellie's and you get another perspective on and it's not a... Hey there, Val Dweller. Speaking of Fallout, if you want to see your boy here streaming 
Fallout 4 as an actual scientist, you can go to twitch.tv slash sci right now, drop a photo, drop a subscription there, Vault Dweller, because twice a week, maybe, I don't know, <laughs> twice a week, your boy here for the next week or so will be putting on an actual lab coat, be diving into Fallout 4, and be giving you pure scientist gameplay. That means maximized intelligence, minimized charisma, laser weapons only. Siding with the Institute, we'll, we're, we've already had many hours of great times, not just that, combined with no less than around 17 or 18 science lessons, we've already done Go check out twitch.tv slash sci-file if you want to. I don't care, but it would be cool if you joined us. I guess. Thank you. If there's one thing I'm good at, it's, it's hyping up myself. Pure scientist gameplay, absolutely. Quick question. Quick, quick little science tidbit that I thought was fun before we, uh, we close out the stream and get back to your comments and questions for a second. Um, Apep is a nice guy, says, have you checked out Ghosts of Tsushima? Yeah, I'm playing through the new DLC right now. It's great. What a great game. I want to ask you a quick question. What is the best way to transport a tranquilized rhinoceros? It's a question you've never asked yourself, but you know who has asked themselves this question? Um, the researchers who just recently won one of the prizes at the Ig Nobel Prize Ceremony from 2021. The Ig Nobel Prizes are basically like the Nobel Prizes, but for research that makes you laugh and then makes you think. That's their tagline. So um, it was an open question. What the best way, not on a motorcycle, no, not via nightcrawler, no, don't put it in a fridge, pixel biscuit. Y'all don't know what you're talking about. So when you tranquilize uh, a rhino, you want to transport it to another area. You want to do some uh, medical tests or treatment on that rhino. What is the best way? Traditionally, it was like this. You trank it from a helicopter. <laughs> they use guns, but I use blow darts. Uh, they trank it. <laughs> and they put it on its side. And then they airlift it somewhere else with a big old heli choppy. But is that the best way to do that? Many animals, when they wake up, have been found to have muscle damage or respiratory damage or something wrong with their bodies because they have, that's literally hundreds and hundreds of pounds, relaxed and compressing and being moved around. So what is the best way to airlift a rhinoceros? Samira Perry says, upside down? <laughs> Samira what is look you're gonna be embarrassed because that is one of the silliest nonsensical si research has found that hanging an unconscious rhinoceros upside down from a helicopter is slightly less damaging to the animal, if not just slightly. But hanging an elephant upside down from a helicopter and transporting it has been found to be a viable method of transporting an, elef uh, an elephant. Have I said that like three times? Transporting a rhinoceros. Research that makes you laugh, then makes you think. No one... Uh, I love science that asks the question that no one ever thought to ask. Well, I mean... <laughs> some guy is in, in some... Is, is in some building somewhere. I was like... What if we just... What if we just hang it from its feet? Some other guy's like... <laughs> what? What? And then you do the research, you're like, oh, yeah, that's ridiculous, but that works. That's when science is at its best. I love it. Rick Massey says, that looks horrible on its joints, or is it awesome? 
I would. Asked and answered. <laughs> Neri Brugoni, and we'll just have about 10 more minutes of your questions, anything, and your, eh, I know it's been two weeks, but we're back, here, we're still making videos, one's gonna come out this week, I think, don't worry, um, did he talk about mammoths already, uh, Disastrix, yes, you're gonna have to go back after this is live, bring it back to the beginning of the episode, what I was, Someone said something. Um, Kaden says, have you played Titanfall 2? Yes, Titanfall 2, fantastic campaign. I love that campaign. Very sciencey, super fun, movement super fluid, acting is good. CR Smith with a five says, what if we replace the planet Mercury with the same size ball of actual Mercury? Note, the old Mercury has been thrown into the sun for being useless. Um, that sounds very complicated. What I will say is that gravity doesn't really care what it is as long as the mass is the same. Now, what can happen to that mass is different. Maybe the mercury gets compressed to such a point that the you know the center f starts fusing or does some or heats up like crazy and does some other thing. I don't know what would happen to the center. But if you replaced any of the bodies in the solar system with the same amount of mass as that body, nothing would change. My favorite example is that, I mean, aside from everything freezing over and everybody dying, if you were, <laughs> aside from that, if you replace the sun with a with an equal mass black hole, nothing would change about the orbits of the planets. It doesn't care. Uh, Artem with the RUB 500, don't know what that is. Is that, doesn't matter. When cheap nuclear fusion energy is available, what will we do with it firstly? Uh, definitely power grid. One of the... Our power grid is pretty flimsy right now, and one of the things that I think most people don't know about, but would be scared if they did know about it, is just how flimsy our electric production is and our electricity grid is. We're, we're always moments from everything crashing. So you... <laughs> literally. So you want stable, continuous generation power. Um, and lots of it. And you can get that from something like fusion power, or nuclear power, which we should have more of. Um, so I'm, I'm gonna guess that cheap, well, cheap fusion power is just gonna go everywhere. Um, what will probably happen practically, it will just be plugged into existing grids, rather than rebuilding the entire grid to take advantage of it, right? Thomas Hadrick with the 10. Sorry, I missed the previous dono, but I see it now. TID89 TID, TI Titanium Kyle Hill Edition. I'll talk to Texas Instruments. That's not a joke. What side space game should be remade and why is it Parasite Eve? Um, no, it, it should be Dead Space and that's getting remade. Uh, Twins with the 20. Twinge. A lot of little tips. Like it. Thanks for all you do. What are your thoughts on quantum computing? Could you do a bit on it? <laughs> Don't you mean, could I do a qubit on it? <laughs> Kevin, write that down. Oh. Oh, God. Oh. Oh. Pendulum almost swung all the way the other way on that one. Uh, quantum computing seems cool. Uh, Cody Nasbit with another five says, You mentioned you were into Diablo 2. Are you going to play the remake? Yes, I've already played the, um, the beta for uh, Diablo 2, and it was... I'll say this. Oh, it's a... RUB is a Russian ruble. Here are some. Thank you. I'll be going near Russia soon. It's not Russia. I'll be going to Ukraine in just a couple weeks. Going to Chernobyl. It's Robin. Um. Who said what? Co uh, Cody. Uh, Diablo 2, the remake, 
it looks great. It sounds amazing. The original soundtrack and the and the the sound design is fantastic. What I will say though, it is it's faithful to the original Diablo 2. It is slow. You still have to run and walk and conserve stamina. It's like the old game. It's slow and plodding and grindy. But if, if that's what you want, that's what you're going to get. Gideon Machiavelli with a five. We get it. Your name is cool. The cubit line was good. I know. That's why I laughed until I cried. I laughed so hard that I pivoted into a depression. How are you today, Kyle? Says Nentrat. Uh, good. I'll tell you. Once I bought myself a bicycle and I started... I, I wanted it once I started taking back my mornings by which I mean I'm getting up I'm jumping out of the facility bed 10 miles on the bike outside 30 laps in the pool coming back inside once I started doing that getting the blood pumping getting my 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 heart rate up to like 150 for like an hour coming back mornings have been feeling pretty damn good rather than waking up and being like oh I guess I'm alive <laughs> here we go <laughs> uh crit of mine says you look like a name quality of chat it's going down a little bit brian schmidt says ukraine is not in russia ukraine is ukraine yeah i know i said i'd be going near right you guys are letting me down you look like a name what does that mean I said I'm going to Ukraine and not Russia. You, come on. Come on. Give me, give me, it's almost, we're almost ending the stream here. Give me some more science. Uh, Boyger Boy says, the best part of waking up is Folgers in your cup. That's not true. It's taking a 10 mile bike ride. Uh, Nomad Life says, have you seen the Matrix 4 trailer? Yes. And my theory is that Spongebob with the five says, Satisfactory is the game for you, Kyle. Okay. Uh, Nomad Life, Matrix 4 trailer. My theory about the Matrix 4, Resurrections, is that the Matrix, the infrastructure of the Matrix, because it pulls um, bioelectricity and, BT and body heat, BTUs of body heat, from its participants, from its human batteries, um, it doesn't necessarily need to keep recycling the human bodies if the minds die if that makes sense so if i was a, a super villainous giant sentient ai robot overlord i would say that if the mind died in the system that keeps the bodies happy or was going to die um keep the body but change the mind, right? If you can simulate an entire world, that doesn't seem like that it's that crazy. And then, if you're changing minds but keeping the body, it makes sense that you can have these reincarnated, so to speak, versions of some of these Matrix characters, where you could have a, a Neo who's not Neo or a Morpheus who's not Morpheus. Um, their, their essence their minds return to the matrix um and that kind of makes sense in the context of you know the architect saying you know there's many predators this has happened many times before i've met and the merovingian saying i've met your predecessor i know a lot about the matrix the uh, merovingian saying i've met your predecessors they could all have been neo and the anomaly is always neo and there's always a morpheus and that could just be within the confines of the programming that is set up based on the biology that is already there. Was that too in-depth? That's my idea. I also don't care. Because <laughs> the trailer gave me goosebumps and looks cool. That's all I care about. Look, I know a lot of you think that when I go to a sci-fi movie, I'm sitting there and I'm like, mm -mm, no, can't happen. I'm not like that. I'm not a dick. <laughs> I don't ruin a movie for other people. Um... If something is really bad, it will take me out of the movie. Um, like in Interstellar, where they have all this incredible physics. Stuff even scientists haven't seen on screen before. And then Anne Hathaway's like, well, maybe love acts like gravity. It's like, you're 
literally one of the smartest scientists in the world on a spaceship around a black hole. And that's what you that's what you think? Anyway. Um Matrix 4 trailer looks dope. And that that's my idea for what's actually happening in the Matrix. Again, I don't care. But Ari and I want to have a Keanu Reeves day. Are, are uh, John Wick 4 and Matrix 4 still coming out on the same day? Think about how monumental this man is, by the way, Keanu. He has two genre-defining roles. Sequels coming out on the same day. What a power... Did I just disconnect and reconnect? I might have to end the stream. <laughs> Uh, my computer's being a little, uh, I'm lagging. Yeah, I just, I just disconnected and I'll probably be back. Yep, 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 yep. Okay, I'm gonna have, to, something's going wonky with my computer, so we'll, we'll end it there. We'll end it there. Something happened. I know, it's the, ma see, I started talking about the Matrix and the Matrix came in and glitched me out. Uh, but to... Every action movie after John Wick became John Wick. Every sci-fi movie uh, with cool special effects was trying to recapitulate The Matrix. What 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 a career. Anyway, I'm back. The Matrix is obviously trying to take me off the air. I'll get the basilisk on it. Don't worry. Thank you so much for joining me in this episode of Office Hours. We talked about woolly mammoths. Should we do it? Not in, I don't think we should do it in the way that these scientists want to do it. The best way to transport an elephant could be by its ankles. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you to Sparky, thank you to Mandatory Sin, thank you to all the giant simpers for science, it's all going towards science, education, everything that we're doing here at the facility. This week on the facility, if you want to see, uh, if you want to see more science, go to the YouTube page, check it out, we will have a new episode, hopefully, coming out this week about how to turn your face into an antenna, we'll be streaming on Twitch, more scientist plays, Fallout 4, giving you gameplay, giving you education, hopefully, as we do that. If you want to keep chatting with me after this video is live, patreon.com slash Kyle Hill. Join the Discord. Get a lab coat. See episodes early. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your week. If I don't see you in the next episode, if I don't see you in the next stream, I'll see you next week on Office Hours. And uh, thank you to my security team for keeping everything spick and span. Until next time. Be nice to each other. This is all we got. What? Like, what do you mean giant robot squids are heading towards our location? <laughs> I'm sure it's fine.